Hey there! Um, it's been a long time since I filmed anything, and to be honest, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about today. Um, Andrew is watching some Chuggington, which is apparently his new favorite show to watch on top of um, shark videos and Big Hero 6, which he is also currently obsessed with. Um, but yeah, so he's happily watching stuff right now, but you might hear him kind of in the background. I have a few empties to talk about. These have been empty for a while and I just, I think I just never talked about them. Um, so like five things I'll just breeze through and then maybe just do a little bit of a like update on what's going on um, over here. Um, okay, so boring stuff, cotton pads. These ones were from Joe Fresh. I absolutely hated these. I bought them a long time ago and um, really couldn't figure out how to use them up. They they were the kind that, you know, when you were trying to take nail polish off or whatever, they would stick to nail polish and they would rip off and get all these like little cotton fibers everywhere. And the same was true when you used it on your face, you would get like little bits of cotton stuck to your face. So I really, really hated those. So um, glad those are done and I'm never buying those again. Um, so yeah, so then I did finish another package of my favorite kind of cotton rounds. Um, these ones are from Costco. I really like them. Um, I will probably just keep buying these ones forever and ever until they stop selling them at Costco. Um, then I finished this aloe soothing night cream from the body shop. Um, took me a while to finish this for no particular reason other than I sometimes forget to use a night cream and I'll use my same cream that I use during the day at night because I just like don't think about it and I just reach for something and use it. Um, <clears throat> I liked it. Um, I'm trying the vitamin E version of the night cream right now, um, so I don't know if I'm going to get this again or not, or depending on which one I end up liking better. But to be honest, I don't really remember um, sort of the comparison between the two. Um, I think this one is a little bit of lighter cream than the vitamin E one. The vitamin E one is definitely richer. And that's been good for the winter, and it's still kind of wintry outside right now. Um, the snow is melting, but it's still fairly cold um, and windy, and the heaters are all still on. So I think right now I still need something with that little bit of extra um, to it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe come summer I might think about getting this one again or something similar. I don't really know. Um... This I've had finished for a long time now, but never talked about it. It's Body Shop Strawberry Body Butter. Um, I like it. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get it again. I have a lot of body butters stashed in my um, closet right now to get through, so I probably won't be buying another one of those for a while. Um, so, yeah. And the last thing is um, a St. Ives Green Tea Cleanser. I actually really, really like this. Um, Except it was a little bit, as I got into winter time, I think it was a little bit too harsh for uh, my skin. So I did end up buying a whole bunch of these other cleansers that were, um, you know, a lot of the more sort of milky, non-foaming ones are supposed to be better for dry skin. But I've discovered that I actually really just need something that foams up. So I've been trying different things and I don't know, I haven't had very good luck with like face cleansers. So when the weather warms up again, I'm probably going to buy this again because I really liked it. I like how it, you know, foams up nicely and it it's good for, um, you know, when the weather is hot and stuff like that. Not so great when the weather is cold, but um, probably when summer comes around, I'll probably look to getting another, um, another one of those. Um, and that's it. So I'm pretty bad about using stuff up. I'm not really too sure why. Um, I'll probably have some like shampoo that's finishing up soon because I bought like this huge humongous like jumbo bottle of shampoo a while ago um, and I'm finally like getting close to the end of it. Um, in terms of stuff that's going on like in life and whatever, um, work is super busy. I kind of got um, I don't know if, like, I guess it's kind of a promotion. Yeah, I guess I got, yeah, I got a promotion at work, um, a few months ago, probably back in October or November. Um, and that was good because I got uh, a raise in my pay, but, like, the raise is like this while the extra work is like that. Um, and there's a couple projects that have kind of, um... You know, like when they say like the, you know, what hits the fan, it kind of, that kind of happened for like two of my projects. And um, it's sort of 
forced a bunch of my other work to kind of fall behind which was kind of unfortunate and I'm having a bit of a time trying to catch everything back up um so yeah that's a little bit stressful right now and um the other thing is just that um like with Andrew so we were you know before I talked about how we think he's sort of got a bit of like sensory processing and whatever so we did take him to the doctors and so we did get sort of a formal diagnosis now and it's autism spectrum disorder um or ASD and that's basically kind of like a really like blanket catch-all term for a lot of sort of cognitive developmental things is what I'm finding because really he's like quite high functioning we took him to like a speech therapist oh, okay good thank you um he is quite yeah his language is good and um but his social skills are kind of lacking and she was saying that in the previous system um the way they like graded things they might have said that he had asperger's but um they don't use that term anymore so everything just falls under the umbrella of autism spectrum disorder so um night I guess kind of nice to have like something except then you go to the internet and there's like a crap ton of stuff out there on autism and not all of it really relates to you and you're just like reading all these things it's just too much so um yeah so we're still sort of navigating that we're kind of navigating our way through um trying to access different services some of which are um paid for by the government some of which we might have to out of pocket like or we can access funding for anyway so we're still sort of researching all that sort of stuff and still trying to pinpoint exactly what he needs because he's obviously all constantly changing um so yeah we're not um 100 percent sure how this is going to go um things right now at school for him are good because he's essentially like continued doing jun junior kindergarten at his <clears throat> at his uh, daycare so Nathan and him like still go to the same daycare that they've always been going to um, but they are able to give him a lot of you know almost one-on-one -on -one attention um, and really sort of coach him through a lot of you know social situations that he is awkward with and um, you know just try and kind of watch his weird behavioral um, like nuances I guess um, the kind of sticky part for us is when he goes to grade one and he enters the public system, um, it is not going to be that way. And obviously he's benefiting from it and, um, but we can't afford to send him to a private school, um, uh, from grade one till, you know, high school. So, um, we're just trying to figure out, they gave us, um, this very very complicated crazy like map about like uh, navigating the Toronto District School Board for kids with autism and it is a very intimidating map it's like the map is small and there's like a web of like every like uh, anyways it is crazy and you just I've read stories online and talked to some other parents and um not super encouraged by like the public school system and I'm just foreseeing a lot of um not arguments with our like future teachers but a lot of like advocating is going to have to happen um yeah and I'm just sort of realizing that these sorts of things are not designed for families where both parents work all the like appointments that they want us to go to and like all these you know, like if you wanted to chat with anybody, it's all got to be during office hours. Well, guess what? I keep office hours too. That mean I have to work and I cannot be doing stuff for my kid. But I mean, obviously I will because my family is my priority. But at the same time, like my work is important to me. And um, yeah, sometimes I cannot drop, uh, you know, very important client meetings or, you know, project meetings for a this or a that or a... So that's kind of challenging. And um, for those of you out there, ladies who, um, moms who are working, I'm sure you kind of feel this too. There's extra pressure, I think, on the mother to, um, you know, possibly self-imposed, but also, you know, just situationally, you end up um, having to kind of carry the brunt of 
of that sort of thing. Um, you know, Andrew is more comfortable going to appointments with me. He is, um, you know, it's just, it's just in terms of for the kids, like you feel like you just want to accommodate them as much as possible, but it is really, really hard, uh, you know, on your schedule. Um, like career wise, it's, uh, it's not easy to, you know, be a working mom. Um, yeah. And just, it's, it's, it's really hard. Like it, it's just not, nothing out there is designed to accommodate, um, a working parent as they try to navigate through this. Um, so anyways, we'll just sort of see how this goes and we'll sort of see how grade one shapes up. And, um, you know, we were sort of talking about it, like, well, what if, like he needs homeschooling and I was like I can't do that you can't do that like we were like I don't know what we're gonna do but private school that's like say goodbye to my entire salary to pay for private school like is that what we want too like I don't know this is it's just a little crazy so anyway so that's just been a lot of stuff for us to think about and has been keeping us busy and I mean as you can imagine um Andrew's behaviors are somewhat challenging he's I mean he's a he's a good kid he's like he's a fun kid but he just has certain things that um are tricky and difficult um and uh it might not ever get easier you know it's like one of those things that like oh it's a phase they'll grow out of no not for Andrew so that is um a little hard to deal with, a little one of those things that we worry. I mean, it's super early for us to worry too much about right now, but like you kind of wonder like if he is just continues to be like socially like he just is, does not integrate socially very well. So you kind of worry like as they get older, like so much of growing up and fitting in and all that requires you to understand social cues or to understand um, you know, like those sorts of things. And he is absolutely oblivious to all of that. Um, so, you know, as a parent, you kind of wonder or you kind of worry like, okay, when he grows up, like what is going to become of him? Right. And obviously super early, he's not even five yet. He turns five later in April. Obviously like it's, we got a long way to go, but, um, yeah, you kind of, you kind of worry like a lot of going to school is about making friends and um, that's what makes things kind of fun and like you know you don't want him to be the kid that gets bullied because he's kind of different um, so hopefully he'll find some friends who will kind of like stick up for him and stuff like that but um, yeah you're just gonna have to wait and see um, Nathan is doing great he is um, picking up lots of words and uh, like loves Andrew and basically wants to follow Andrew around everywhere and just do whatever it is that Andrew wants to do um, and yeah, like he's just, everything about him seems to be just run of the mill normal, right? So I don't have a lot to talk about with him other than he's like super adorable and still has his like baby chub and I love it. Um, yeah, and he's like super cute. Um, Andrew is summoning me to give him some goldfish <laughs> crackers. So I'm gonna go and do that because I did promise he could have a treat. Um, but yeah, um, other than that, things are going okay. We're just, um, just trucking along. I um conned Jamie well not really conned he he said it was fun he uh, I'm gonna be going to Vegas with a bunch of um girlfriends one of my um good friends is turning 40 and so her for her 40th she wants to go to Vegas and I was like sure why not so a whole bunch of us were gonna go just for that and I'm gonna go by myself and leave Jamie and the kids here um and we'll see I've never been to Vegas before so it should be fun if you guys have any um, suggestions for stuff to do. We're going to be staying at Paris, I think, and is the Paris, Paris, oh, anyways, that's where we're staying. And, um, yeah, if you've got suggestions for, like, shopping or stuff to see, places to eat, um, I'll be there probably for, like, two and a half days. So, not a lot of time, but enough time to kind of, like, have a nice party with her and, uh, then head home. Um, that's about it. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, this video has rambled for quite a bit, but um, sorry about that. Hope you guys are all doing well. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And um, hopefully I will find some time to talk to you guys again soon. Okay.